Are you going to eat the whole time while I'm filming? Hmm? The whole time? Are you having lunch? Thank you. Thank you for stopping to eat. Okay, I'm going to talk to them now. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Amy. This is the Opinionated Woman. And welcome to Crafty Reads, the series where I make a piece of art and uh, I talk about the last five books that I read. Um, last time I finished my last piece, so all I'm going to be doing is working on the background of the next piece. All I know is that I want it to be green. I don't know what else I'm going to do, that's just what came to me, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't expect this one to be too long because of the types of books I have to talk about. I will, we'll, we'll, you'll see as we go along. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So to round off my pride reading, the, the next three books round out my pride reading, basically. So the first one was Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina Mae Safi. Um, and I think one of the issues <laughs> with this book is that I burnt myself out on romances, especially sapphic romances. Um, I don't usually read the same genre one after the other. I don't do that ever. I always mix it up. Um, because I find I burn myself out on um, certain genres if I if I keep repeating them. So I had read far too many sapphic romances and by the time I got to this one it just honestly annoyed me. Um, we're following Rachel and Sana who are high school students and it's like an enemies to lovers thing. There was a misunderstanding when they first met. Rachel didn't realize that Sana was genuinely asking her out. She thought she was um, taking the piss, basically. Um, and she's just liked her ever since. Um, and therein lies one of the issues I had with this. Rachel's a fucking bitch for no reason. Like, I get her mom ran out on her. Um, but... I don't think that means that you get to be an absolute asshole to someone for absolutely zero reason. Um, like she's just initially from the first second, like the first scene you see her in, she's so fucking mean. And Sana, while she is terrible at communicating, um, is a very lovely person. And I'm like, why do you like Rachel? I don't understand because what happens is through a series of unfortunate events, they get paired together and uh, Sana has to be in Rachel's final film project because she wants to be a filmmaker. And I just honestly don't understand why Sana liked Rachel at all. I found her really irritated and frustrating and what this book fell into was a lot of those miscommunication tropes and I really hate that. I really, really hate miscommunication. Like in real life, one of my biggest things when it comes to dating is communicating because I can't, I can't abide people just fucking lying. <clears throat> and I think one of the uh, things that um, romance books fall into is these stereotypical like miscommunication for drama kind of things. And I just think it's tired and overused. Like I really feel like there's more interesting ways of causing conflict than people just not fucking talking to each other. Um, or ever going to therapy for anything. Ugh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wasn't invested in this romance. I didn't really understand why these two were a pair at all. And yeah, I was just kind of just waiting for the end, to be honest. Then we had another book that uh, again suffered from burnout, but this book was still this book was still good and I enjoyed it. And that is uh, Wow No Thank You by Samantha Irby. Um, at the beginning of my Pride reading, I was reading her her book, oh, what is it called? It's a essay collection called, we are never meeting in real life. Um, wow No Thank You is also an essay collection. And I read Wow No Thank You um, leading up to Pride. And then I needed a book that I could dip in and out of, you know, that wasn't a narrative that I was going to lose track of with my Pride reading. And I just went straight into her next collection of essays and it's an audiobook, so it's narrated by her. Um, so it was just the same voice for a very long time and the same humor. And I feel like I would have enjoyed it far more if I split them apart because then I could be like, oh, I need a little um, 
Joseph Smith Irby humor like let me let me pick this one up but yeah I think I read too much of it in one go and she is a negative bitch <laughs> and I mean that in like I've been called that many times before like it's in a relatable way um but it can be a bit like uh wearing <laughs> to constantly have this negativity um so yeah good book i really recommend samantha irby's essays there's nothing wrong with this book at all i just burnt myself out on an another book whoops <laughs> Then I read another one that also disappointed me, which is really frustrating. <laughs> and that is Affinity by Sarah Waters. Like, this book is by no means bad, but it is not my favorite Sarah Waters. Hey, don't stay on my book book. Sit. Yes, good. Stay there. Um, so Affinity follows Margaret, who is a fancy lady, um, who we get the impression has had some kind of breakdown. Um, and she's been given the opportunity by a friend of her father's to become a lady visitor at Millbank Prison, <clears throat> where she'll go and visit the women that are there for whatever reasons. Um, and on her visits, she meets this medium called Selena Dawes, who's there for injuring a woman during a reading um, and causing another one to die from shock, as it appears. Um, but so Sarah Waters books are mostly sapphic right and I was waiting for a sapphic romance kind of vibe to happen and it does occur but it it sort of just happens like out of nowhere I don't feel there was enough exploration into uh and I mean I know it's hard because Selena is in a cell after all um but we didn't really get that much connection between the characters to really understand why they you go um to really understand why they were invested in one another like i could see what selena was trying to do but i couldn't understand from margaret's point of view like i didn't get the connection i really didn't um i didn't quite predict what the twist was going to be so I was just like oh okay very well done I mean it's Sarah Waters it's still written really well um and maybe if I'd read it before some of her others I would have enjoyed it more but um I think especially after reading Tipping the Velvet uh which was way more like character development and exploration um and more See, the thing is, Selena is stuck in the prison, so we don't get a lot of story outside of the prison, and it's very claustrophobic feeling, and I do suffer from claustrophobia. Um, so that's like a little bit uncomfy for me to read, but I suppose that means that it was written in a good way, because that's meant to feel kind of claustrophobic. You're in prison, after all. Um, so yeah, I finally read all of Sarah Waters' books, um, and... I think my favorite one is still the second one I ever read, which is Fingersmith. So yeah, if you want to start anywhere with Sarah Waters, start with Fingersmith. Then Pride was over and I picked up Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. Um, this has been sold as Bridget Jones be uh, featuring Americana, which I totally get because we're following Queenie and her life and her dating history and her family relations um, and the you know, bizarre situations that she gets herself into um, in a Bridget Jones-esque kind of manner. But we also get a lot of exploration into race, um, especially to do with hair, um, what, what it's like for a woman of color to date white people, um, and the way she's treated in comparison to a lot of her white counterparts, which is very interesting. Um, aspect to see especially obviously from a white woman's point of view um it also goes into a lot to do with her culture um and with mental health and trauma and how trauma can affect you especially when um queenie's coping mechanism is to really take everything and put it deep down shove it down as far as it could go you know um so that she doesn't have to deal with it um but at the part of the story that we enter her life, um, her long-term partner has left her 
and she's sort of like in a flux. Um, she's not fulfilled at work. She's not fulfilled in her in her personal life, and there's so many things that she's just not communicating and not asking for help for, and it inevitably implodes on her. And I think the way it was handled um, and the therapy rep that's in here was very effective. And I really appreciated seeing someone identifying themselves having a problem and going, right, my solution is therapy, because that's always what my solution is for. If someone comes to me with an issue, I'm like, you going to therapy? <laughs> um, and yeah, I just thought that this handled it in a, in a very good way. And finally, we have a book that I can't talk to you much about, but that is Child of the Prophecy by Juliette Merlier. Um, if any of you have read this trilogy, the Seven Waters trilogy, this is the third in the series. Um, I've been wanting to read it for a long time and I managed to get hold of it from the UK because Juliette Merlier's books are really hard to get hold of in South Africa. If you don't want to use <clears throat> The Devil That Is Amazon, which I do not use. Um, but Child of the Prophecy is the third installment in the trilogy and we're, the way that this, this series works is that each book we're following a different character from a different generation of the same family, all generating from the Seven Waters, which is in Ireland. Um, and it's to do with the Fae and um, there's a lot of folklore in it and there's like a little bit of magic and the first two are not really really magical but the third one the third one follows someone who has um, been taught sorcery by her father and so we get a lot more um, of the the sort of fantasy realm out of it and I really really like that aspect of this book it also has so much tension and like I can't tell you what about because the thing is that there's parts of the first book that weave into the third like it's so beautifully done between the three and I love that one of the characters like say in the first book when he was like a young man is now like a wise druid um, and seeing how he's changed through his life and through the different things that they've gone through as a family um, it's really wonderful and I really enjoyed it and I thought that it was concluded in such a haunting and like bittersweet way I just I, I thought it was perfectly ended and I would love to read more of Juliette Murillo because that is my vibe and there we have it that is all um, I've done this green Ta-da! oh it's still a bit wet <laughs> um, but yeah, that is all I have left. Um, that is all I have left. That is uh, everything I had to talk about. Um, I, I've already read my next book, <laughs> but we will talk about that in the next one. I like keeping this as like five every every time. I just think it works out that way. Um, but yeah, if you did enjoy, please let me know, like, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, and I'll check you next time.